I'm going to answer the question. Can you directly release a queen when installing a package of bees? Or do you need to wait and let them eat through that candy plug? We're going to start right now. I'm just going to kind of open it up. And I'm going to set the opening against the comb. What's going on? My name is David Burns. And if you want to keep your bees healthy and avoid some horrible mistakes, then please click on subscribe, click on the bell, and that way you'll be notified each time I make a new video to help you keep healthy bees. This package was put together uh, about a week ago. And so they've been in a package now for about six or seven days. What if we directly release the queen? Will they ball up and kill her? Or will she be okay? Let's give it a try. Let me pop this open here. All right. Let's set our queen cage over there for a minute. And uh, I'm not wearing any gloves, so we'll see how that goes, right? And so what we'll do is just start pouring them in. Now I do want to save some bees. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you why. Because I'm going to pour some on a frame. So let me choose a piece of frame. I got some drawn comb here. Let me set my drawn comb out here. I'll just dump bees on it. Oh gosh, that's plenty, isn't it? All right. So I'm going to turn this over so a lot of them will fall down in there. I don't need that many. All right, I'm going to set this aside while I pour the rest of this package in there. Look at that. It's kind of all in there. There's one on my finger here. Walking around. Hmm. All right. So let's go ahead and shake them in there. All right. Do we get them all? Let's take a look. No, I must have. All right, so here's my queen cage, as you can see. The queen's in there. And we're going to just uh, try to install it right, or try to let her out about right over in here. So keep an eye. Let me get the bees off of here. Oh, my queen is very, very active. Oh, boy. A lot of these queens, in a, I mean, look how active she is running around in there. You can see the dark shadow of the queen moving around in the cage, in her own queen cage here. Okay, well, so let's go ahead. Get my camera focused right there. And I'm just going to kind of open it up. And I'm going to set the opening against the comb. Move out of the way. Excuse us. Mm -hmm. Kind of move these bees out of the way a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right, that's a good spot. Let's see if we can see at the. Yep, there she goes. All right, she's walking around. Look at that. She's right here at the end of my finger. and She's being fed by some bees. They're gathering around her. The tension is mounting. She's uh, taking an interesting posture, I will have to admit. She seems to have reared up. Kind of like she's on all her legs, but she's reared up. Okay, she's being fed. I would say that's a good sign. This doesn't appear to be any type of aggression, like bawling. There's mouth, uh, feeding by the mouth to mouth there, like bees do. Tickling antennas, feeding each other. I kind of like what I'm seeing. I mean, it looks like that things are going well on a direct release. I would say what it looks like to me is that they are definitely caring for her. Yep. 
see how they're just feeding her and they're actually kind of let's say licking her pheromones getting familiar with her so that's a very good sign I just wanted to make a little video to see what happens if you directly release a queen from a package after several days now we're gonna put this frame in position and be careful not to injure the queen there she is so I'm gonna carefully place her kind of right here I think maybe I'll put her right in the middle and I've got a frame of honey right here I'm gonna move it over that'll be fine leave it there and then I'll put uh, some undrawn comb to give the bees some things to do for a while so they have uh, some honey in here a frame of honey because it, it still might get cold in May in Illinois but then I also have uh, some undrawn comb the green comb here that you see uh, here uh, this is a green drone comb from my control now, if you've never used a green drone comb, they are one of the most effective ways to control mites because you trap the varroa mite destructor on that green drone comb and then you can freeze and kill all the mites. So it's a really cool way to control mites. All right, we'll keep an eye, but I think everything is going to be good on this, uh, mm -hmm. on this hive with a direct release getting my coffee ready for coffee time and I hope you'll continue to watch and join me as we talk about life and and enjoy a cup of coffee together I uh, love this coffee cup I love this coffee it's a beautiful morning here today the birds are chirping loudly it is an awesome day I want to talk to you about being yourself um, a lot of people are uncomfortable with who they are are they mad at themselves a lot? Are they hear negative voices in their head? My wife told me that she read the other day that we have 50,000 thoughts going through our head every day. And she said of those 50,000, that f I think it was 40,000 are negative thoughts. Isn't that terrible? Wow. So I wanted to make a coffee time and dedicate it to being ourselves. And I thought I'd give you some tips on how you need to be yourself more and not be so hard on yourself. Being yourself means that you have to learn to like yourself. And there's a lot of obstacles that are in our way sometimes. And we don't like ourselves as much as we should. We're kind of taught that it's arrogant or it's uh, kind of haughty if you like yourself. You know, you should, you should like others, but, you know, don't worry about yourself. Well, we, that's really not healthy. We need to learn to really enjoy who we are and contribute to the world around us for us. I mean, we're the only us there is. <laughs> and we have certain superpowers in being ourselves. And by superpowers, I mean unique abilities uh, that only we have because of the unique person that we are. Now, for you to become a person that really enjoys being you and liking yourself, you really need to stop being pessimistic in your thoughts and stop being hard on yourself with all the negative thoughts. And be more positive. Look at yourself with better eyes. Look at yourself as somebody that, sure, makes mistakes, not perfect, okay, got a few issues, whatever, but stop being so pessimistic. It's easy to get pessimistic about the future, the outlook, how you see all things. Oh no, it's cloudy, it's gonna rain. Oh no, my car won't start. And you know, just constantly uh, your outlook in life can, be, can become pessimistic. Or how you see yourself can be very pessimistic. Oh, I'm not pretty, I'm not handsome, I, I'm overweight, I don't have the muscles that I want, I wish I had better hair. And you're just always beating yourself up. There's no room for that. You are who you are. You really can't change a lot of who you are. So learn to get rid of that pessimism and be more positive about how you see yourself. Next, stop trying to please everyone. Oh, isn't that a tough one? We are brought up in a, in a culture that kind of tells us we need to please everybody, make everybody happy. That will drive you insane. Stop 
trying to please everybody. You can't do it. As hard as you try, it will never work out. Even if it does work out, it's always fleeting and temporary. You try to do everything you can to please somebody, before long you'll mess up, they won't like you anymore. <laughs> and you know, it's just tough. Uh, so don't spend a lot of time trying to please others. And I should say only trying to please others. Um, it's not healthy to, to spend your day wondering, what do they think about me? What does that person think about me? How do they think I performed? How do you, th I wonder how they view me. What can I do to be their friend? What are they saying about me now? Very unhealthy. You gotta stop doing that. Learn to not care what people think about you. And next, you need to celebrate who you are. Be happy with you. Even though some people may not like you, and even though you're different, it's okay. It's being different that makes us unique. Learn to celebrate the things that you really, really think are just you. And finally, put your passion into something that is just for you. Pursue something. Tackle something new. Try to do something that only involves you and brings a lot of pleasure to you. It's okay. It's not bad. Uh, my wife wants to start uh, pursuing line dancing. Not as a career, not even as a hobby. She just wants to do something that she's never done and she wants to do line dancing. She hasn't asked me yet to line dance with her, um, but I feel like I want to because boy, that would be a stretch for me. I'm not a dancer, uh, but how hard can standing in a line and dancing be? <laughs> um, you're standing in a line, that's why it's line dancing, and I guess you're dancing to music. Unfortunately for me, I'm not a real big fan of country music. I don't hate it, but it's not my favorite music. And I think a lot of line dancing seems to be country, mu country and western music, but I'll see. But, you know, she's going to pursue it. She's going to have fun doing it. Heck, I want to be there too. <laughs> if I don't like it, I don't have to become a professional line dancer. I can quit. But why not try something? Invest your time, a little bit of money or energy into doing something that you can get passionate about. Something that you're excited about and wakes you up in the morning and says, by gum, I'm going to wake up and do something for me today and I'm going to enjoy it. All right. Well, I hope that's an encouraging time for you to, uh, in coffee time, to be yourself and like who you are, enjoy being you. Well, thanks for joining me for another beekeeping video. I really do appreciate it. Hey, and if you wanna leave some comments below, I would like that. In fact, I'll make a deal with you. If you wanna ask me some questions in the comments below and I am able to answer them, I will answer them on one condition. You have to ask a question in no more than 12 words, all right? I can't take the time to read long paragraphs and huge scenarios and beekeeping and my bee yard and my grandfather started beekeeping and then I decided I'd help him and uh, you know I, I, I don't have the ability to read through a lot of big heavy questions like that. 12 words and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Well thanks for joining me today friend it's been great. Please subscribe, click on the bell, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. For each quart, you need a teaspoon. I'm not gonna use more than a teaspoon for the... She's looking in cells like she was... Oh, she's laying an egg.